This is the Mercedes-Benz EQS SUV. So this is the SUV version of the full electric four-door sedan EQS. So today I'm gonna test this SUV QS to see if it's comfortable, if it's got a ton of technology. We're gonna test the range. Obviously, we're gonna test the acceleration. Welcome to the Torque Media channel. Unfortunately, this week we're not able to open the hood. We're not allowed and there is no cargo space, unfortunately, for an EV. But still, we've got a decent powertrain. We've got a battery of 108.4 kilowatt hour joined to two electrical engine who makes an all-wheel drive system. This is good for 536 horsepower and 633 foot-pounds of torque. Pretty decent numbers here. So I'm gonna go on the road and see if this SUV version of the EQS is better than the sedan version. All right, I'm gonna test the acceleration with the EQS SUV. I'm gonna put it in sport. We're ready to go. <laughs> Strong. All right. Uh, you can do the zero to 100 kilometers in about 4.6 seconds, 0 to 60 miles an hour in 4.4, but you can improve this time with a subscription annually. Uh, <laughs> so it's a little bit more than a thousand dollars per year, and you can improve your 0 to 100 kilometers. Uh, I think it goes down to close to four seconds flat. So this is something new. We're gonna see more and more uh, with electric cars. You can have subscription to improve your car. Uh, is it some kind of a gimmick? Is it cool for your point of view? I see that kind of like an upgrade, something a little bit more like trustworthy than a custom aftermarket tune. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. All right, behind the wheel of the EQS SUV this week. It's just fantastic. It's really, really comfortable. It's what you're expecting about a Mercedes-Benz SUV, similar to the EQS sedan, but the sedan version, it's a little bit more comfortable. I think this one's a little bit rougher, but still uh, really enjoyable to drive down the road. We've got a hair suspension who makes a really great job. And also it's adjustable with the height. So if you want to do some mild off-roading, I could say, uh, it's going to raise up the suspension by one inch. And uh, you get also the quad steering wheel. So in the back, your uh, wheel is going to turn also. So with this quad steering wheel, it's really easy to drive also when you're in narrow places uh, with this large SUV. That's going to help a lot. This is also something you can improve with a subscription. So I'm not sure about the price once again, but uh, if you pay a fee, annually uh, it's going to improve the angle of your wheel in the back so you can uh, make even sharper turns or it's going to be easier to park but if we go back to those driving modes we've got different modes we've got eco mode you got the off-road mode the comfort sport and individual though so it changed a lot uh, by the behavior of this or so, the typical stuff you find in expensive suv but still it's fun to have it in this SUV. Handling wise, obviously this SUV is quite heavy, but still with the quad steering wheel, it helps a lot down the curve. And it's it's a different type of driving. It feels like you have like a really sharp steering wheel and you get that back end coming in. Uh, it's really strange when you push it down the curve. Uh, it, it feels like you have like a really sharp handling, but the rest of the, the actual SUV doesn't really follow. Um, you know, I, I didn't really push it uh, down the curve this week. Obviously, it's, it's, it's a super expensive SUV. I'm on winter tires and all that. I've been making new turns with this large SUV in places where other same size of SUVs are not capable to. So from my point of view, this is a big plus. Exterior-wise, we've got a design really similar to the EQS sedan uh, version, but in a SUV shape, I could say. Uh, in the front, we've got uh, this shield. It's not a grill, it's a shield uh, with all those little Mercedes-Benz star, that big Mercedes-Benz logo in the front. Uh, you're sure it's a Mercedes-Benz with that size of logo. Uh, the front bumper is quite large, kind of like an AMG bumper, but uh, there's no AMG announced yet. 
uh, for the EQS SUV model. So kind of like a more aggressive bumper in the front for this 580 model. Uh, but still, if we're going on the side of this uh, EQS SUV, for my point of view, it looks kind of like mini vanish from my point of view. Uh, it reminds me of the old Mercedes-Benz R model. It's kind of like a new version of the R. It looks more like a minivan uh, than a real big SUVs, especially if you compare it to like a more squarish uh, Mercedes-Benz like the GLS or the BMW X7 or the Cadillac Escalade. I like more like a square kind of like a design. I know this is an electric SUV and uh, this SUV needs to be super aerodynamics to get the maximum of range. But still, from my point of view, it's a little bit too much. You know, same kind of complaint for the EQS, you know, four-door sedan. I think the sedan looks better. It's got a better presence on the road. We've got also spatial headlights. Those are digital lights. Uh, they look kind of cool and they, they do some kind of like show when you start the, the vehicle. This is cool. Now, if we step inside and we talk about the technology, the first thing you see inside of this EQS SUV, it's obviously the screen. It's called a hyper screen. It's 51 inches large. So it's actually three screen. We've got digital gauges in front of me. Got a huge screen in the metal and another screen uh, for the passenger, uh, similar to the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. They, they can do a lot of stuff on that screen and watch shows and stuff uh, with some uh, headphones and all that. The screen works pretty well. Uh, you got a huge map. Uh, you can do a bunch of things. I can spend 30 minutes only on the technology and all the stuff you can do uh, inside of this Mercedes-Benz EQS SUV. But what really caught my attention is the cameras are really good quality, 360 cameras and all that. Also, you got the EQ page. It's going to help you with uh, your route, your range, your charging, your consumption and all that. What's cool about the range function, you can maximize your range. And with this, you can remove all the functions, gonna, you know, pull out some juice of the battery to maximize your range. So right now, if I'm using uh, this function, I'm, I can get 38 kilometers more. So uh, it's gonna shut down the climate control, the seat comfort, uh, the eco driving is gonna be activated and also it's gonna restrict some function on the interior. So it's gonna shut down the screen and all that. So if you're really low in battery, you can use that and that can be really helpful. Otherwise, there's not a ton of button inside of this uh, EQS SUV. Everything is pretty much on the screen or here in the metal console. And these are not real hard button. The, the only real button, it's pretty much the, the start stop button and the hazard. Uh, otherwise, those are more touch buttons. Um, when I tried it in the EQS sedan model uh, earlier uh, this summer, everything was working well. Now it's winter time. Sometimes those digital buttons doesn't work as they should. It's typical, you know, with the weather, when it's colder, when you have glove and all that. This is pretty much the down point of not having some hard buttons sometimes. But it was not a big deal this week for that. If we're looking at the overall design of the interior, really nice material, really nice stitching. At night, it looks really good. We've got a bunch of interior lighting and all that. Uh, we've got some nice wood. It looks like wood out of a yacht. Uh, nice material. I like that black interior this week. Earlier this summer with the EQS, we had the uh, white interior. It's really flashy, the white interior. This one's a bit more practical in black. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit less stressful also with the kids. Uh, we got amazing seats, massaging seats and all that. We got the little pillow and all that. Super comfortable. Stepping in the back, we've got the configuration of five seats this week, not the seven seats. Um, so, uh, you know, you've got decent amount of space, comfortable, but I was expecting more space. This AQS SUV is not as large as a Cadillac Escalade or a Lincoln Navigator. Um, I was kind of surprised. I was, you know, expecting more space in the back. Uh, I think uh, it's kind of squeezed out to fit that third row. Uh, with the screen, uh, you know, th that screen is really into your face, especially if you're tall and large like me. Um, also, you know, when we put the baby seat this week uh, with my wife with that screen, we really had to put forward that uh, passenger seat in the front. So, you know, I was expecting a little bit more space for the largest electric SUVs from Mercedes-Benz. 
I know I'm a GMC Yukon owner. Uh, it's not exactly the same type of truck, but I was expecting a little bit more space from my point of view. Uh, if we're looking at the last row, unfortunately, I'm not able to test it this week, but just by the dimension of this actual SUV, and stuff I've seen online. It's uh, it's really tight in that last row. It's really something you're gonna use it maybe sometime, not on a daily basis, and really for small kids. But if you're choosing this one with the uh, configuration of five seats, you've got a really large trunk. And on top of that, you've got even more cargo space underneath that carpet, you know, that floor in the back. Uh, so you can store, uh, you know, your charging cord and all that. So uh, if you don't need that extra third row, super practical with that big trunk. Speaking of those screen in the back, you've got two screen, the kids can listen to all their shows. There's a tablet in the metal console. You can control those screen. This is all like, techy stuff you know it's it's fun to play with uh, and i'm sure all the kids can appreciate having two screen and on top of that always having a tablet in the metal so everyone's happy in the back and obviously this truck is packed with technology but we're not forgetting about the sound system we've got a burmeister 3d surround sound system really good sound system obviously we've got the top of the line mercedes-benz electrical SUV, uh, we've got the biggest screen, the most technology, we've got a tablet in the back, we've got lighting at night, all kind of stuff, uh, you know, you've got the best of the best, pretty much. Range-wise, the EQS SUV 580 4MX can go up to 459 kilometers, and if you got the 450 plus version, you can go up to 490 kilometers. This is close to 500 kilometers. This is pretty good. Uh, I didn't have any issues with the range this week. I was always in between 280 kilometers or more than 300 kilometers, only with my normal, you know, electrical cord at home, level one. Uh, so I didn't have any issues with the range. It's fun to have more and more range on that side. Speaking of charging time, I don't have the time for a level one, but a level two is gonna be uh, around 12 hours, a little bit less than 12 hours if, if your battery is not completely depleted. Uh, the maximum fast charger uh, you can use, it's gonna be at 200 kilowatts. And on a level three, uh, you can recharge uh, your battery from 10% to 80% in only 31 minutes. Uh, decent number on that side. And I was quite surprised this week because this is a large SUV, one of the latest technology. I was able to recharge uh, my battery on my, uh, you know, just my normal outlet at home. It was not the case lately, especially with the Genesis GV60. It was just maintaining, you know, the temperature of the, the battery. It was not as cold this week. This is why I'm not giving you guys this week a winter range. I think with the actual temperature I had this week, it didn't really affect that much uh, the range to see a, a huge difference. All right, speaking of price, a base uh, EQS SUV starts $136,000 Canadian and uh, the base 580 model starts $158,500 and the model I'm driving this week it's good for $178,600 obviously <laughs> expensive SUV it comes with all the technology a good range good power formatics and all that uh, it's quite an expensive SUV I think for the experience of driving, the technology, the comfort and all that, it's all worth it from my point of view. The only thing is kind of like not worth it is the design. You know, it doesn't look like an SUV costs $180,000. Uh, it looks kind of like a minivan. It looks kind of like any SUVs down the road. It doesn't look super expensive. Uh, it's missing something. We don't have the look of the Escalade or the BMW X7. Even from my point of view, the Mercedes-Benz GLS has got a better look. I know they're not as you know aerodynamic as this EQS SUV, but I like a more presence down the road. I like having more a square, classic SUV. I think this is what's really missing about this EQS SUV. It's to be a little bit more rough, you know, uh, having more presence, a little bit less like 
gentle egg. I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this AQS SUV. Do you like the design? Do you like the aerodynamics? Or you're just like me, you like more a classic SUV design? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And we're going to see each other on our next review.